to discuss with Nanette Millen and others how uh, we can take that forward, hopefully on a cross-party basis. Thank you. The next item of business is a statement by Michael Matheson on the Bonamy Review. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement and there should be therefore no interventions or interruptions. I call on Michael Matheson, Cabinet Secretary, around 10 minutes. Thank you, President Officer. On the 23rd of April 2014, my predecessor as Cabinet Secretary for Justice announced agreement across parties that Stage 2 of the Criminal Justice Scotland Bill should be deferred until after Lord Bonamy's post corroboration safeguards review completes its work. The Scottish Government initiated the Bonamy review after listening to views expressed during Stage 1 of the Bill about the impact of removing, of removing the general requirement for corroboration. I have said uh, since taking up post in November that I would await the outcome of the review before reaching a decision on how to proceed on this matter. Lord Bonamy has now completed this review and has provided recommendations on what further safeguards would be required following the removal of the corroboration requirement. Lord Bonamy's reference group, comprised of 18 of the most knowledgeable and respected representatives from across the justice system, including key figures from victims and human rights groups, from academia, from the legal profession and judges. These experts have given this issue thorough and careful scrutiny, undertaking a substantial academic analysis and public consultation exercise. I, presiding officer, am very grateful to the work that they have undertaken and for the considered and collaborative manner in which they have taken it forward. The group's proposals are substantial and complex. Taking forward all of these changes would have a considerable impact on our justice system. One key finding is that research on jury decision-making in Scotland is required before fully informed conclusions can be reached on issues relating to juries. In particular, the report concludes that without research, it is not possible to reach a definitive position on jury size or in the not proven verdict. The report gives provisional recommendations on jury majorities, but argues that this should also be subject to research. The issues Lord Bonamy has raised are of crucial importance, and we should take the time necessary to consider them fully. The Scottish Government will look at Lord Bonamy's detailed recommendations as a package, alongside the corroboration requirement itself and form a view on the best way forward. Our justice system must provide the appropriate balance so that the rights of the suspect, victims and witnesses all get appropriate protection. It must, as far as possible, be fair to all. That's why I want to take a holistic approach and look at these issues in the round. This Government we will now work with stakeholders during the remainder of this Parliament to develop and seek a consensus on a package of proposals for criminal justice reform, including a full response to Lord Bonamy's recommendations. Given this approach, I do not consider there is sufficient time to complete the work, this work before the Criminal Justice Scotland Bill resumes its parliamentary passage. On that basis, it is clear to me that proceeding with the removal of the corroboration requirement in the Bill would be neither appropriate nor feasible. I am therefore making this immediate statement to inform Parliament of this development. The Bill should proceed with the amendment to remove the corroboration provision from the Bill and also to remove the related increase in the jury majorities required for conviction. Removing the corroboration provision from the Criminal Justice Bill will allow the other provisions in the Bill to go forward as soon as the parliamentary timetable permits. These include important reforms to police procedure and practice, as well as strengthening rights to access to legal, ac legal access for suspects and improving uh, improvements to sheriff and jury trials. Officer, the Scottish Government still believes that there is a case to be made for the abolition of corroboration requirement. But we will now consider whether to proceed with it as part of a wider package 
in the next parliamentary session. We should not forget the original motivation behind the proposal to remove the general requirement for corroboration. It was to improve protections and access to justice for victims of crimes committed in private, including domestic abuse, sexual offences and abuse of older and vulnerable people. The Scottish Government remains committed absolutely and unequivocally to improving protections for victims and tackling inequality. We all recognise the added difficulties of prosecuting crimes committed in private, and we all share the belief that victims of crimes deserve access to justice. Despite this, it has not been possible to build a consensus around the corroboration rule at this time. Strengthening access to justice remains a key priority for this Government. I believe that the jury research could play a valuable role in developing a way forward, and there could be merit in looking at wider issues through this form of research. I will therefore look at Lord Bonamy's proposals in this area, and I am open-minded about taking them forward. Lord Bonamy has indicated that some of his recommendations would be worthwhile improvements independent of corroboration reform. I will consider whether it is appropriate to take forward any of the review's recommendations in this parliamentary session. I will be very interested, of course, to hear the views of others within this chamber on that possibility. In the meantime, the Government is already making real improvements for victims, strengthening legal protections and providing direct support towards access to justice. We are making progress in addressing domestic abuse and sexual offences. Although overall crime rates, including violent crime, have fallen, more cases involving domestic abuse and sexual offences are reaching our courts. During 2013-14 alone, there was a 50 per cent increase in the number of charges with a domestic abuse background sent to court, and the number of people with a charge proved in court for sexual offences, including rape and sexual assault, increased by 22 per cent. These increases reflect more proactive policing, better evidence gathering and consistent marking by procurator fiscals, as well as greater confidence amongst victims in coming forward. We are extending the rights of victims uh, through the, witnesses, uh, the Victims and Witnesses Scotland Act 2014 and the Police Scotland pilot on domestic abuse disclosure, known as Clare Law, uh, is due to be completed in May of this year. We launched last month a public consultation on a range of proposals to help victims of domestic abuse and sexual violence, including seeking views on specific, uh, a specific uh, domestic abuse offence, measures to tackle the unauthorised publication of intimate images, and directions to juries in rape trials. The First Minister also announced funding of £20 million over three years to help speed up the process of cases through our courts, support for victims through our criminal justice process, and to address perpetrators' behaviour to prevent further harm. These measures have been widely welcomed by victims' organisations, and we will continue to work with them to support victims of crime. Officer, in conclusion, I want to express my thanks to Lord Bonamy and his reference group for their hard work on this substantial review. Their findings will be valuable in ensuring a clear, fair and coherent justice system for Scotland. I will now take the time to consider the review's recommendations in detail. The Criminal Justice Scotland Bill should proceed without the abolition of corroboration, and I will consider corroboration alongside Lord Bonamy's recommendations. This Government still believes there is a case for abolition, but I have listened to the range of views on this issue. I will continue to listen to all who have an interest in our justice system to work collaboratively towards a fairer Scotland for all. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for questions 
after which we'll move to the next item of business. Members who wish to ask a question of the Minister should press the request to speak button. And I call Hugh Henry. Mr Henry. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Can I join with the Cabinet Secretary in praising the work of Lord Bonamy and his reference group? They had a very specific remit and they have worked within that remit to come up with, I think, a, a very thorough uh, and sensible uh, report. However, today is not a debate about whether or not there should be uh, corroboration. That will be for another time. But I think it's right to contrast um, the, the discussion today and the Cabinet Secretary's comments um, with those made 14 months ago. What a difference 14 months can make. On that occasion, the Cabinet Secretary for Justice told Graham Pearson that the Labour Party's view that it did not make sense to go forward with corroboration um, was selling out its principles and that Labour had sold its soul and is in danger of selling out the victims of crime. But today, I think we've heard a very measured and considerate and mature response from the Cabinet Secretary and is to be commended uh, for that. We will work with him in trying to move this forward in whatever way uh, we, we, we can. Um, he asked, would there be some agreement for taking forward some of the issues? Well, I think if we can reach consensus, then yes, we will work with the Scottish Government um, to see where that is possible. There are a number of things, presiding officer, that I would maybe just want to uh, put down just now for the Cabinet Secretary to consider. There is a debate to be had about whether uh, the waiver of legal advice is in fact informed consent. Will he consider that issue um, carefully? Pre police procedures and practice, will he ensure that if there's any changes to that, that there are adequate resources for video evidence? Will he ensure that in any changes there are adequate resources for the hard work to overpressed uh, fiscal service? And will he give some consideration to the issue which uh, Lord Bonamy has considered about the Lord Advocate's guidelines and whether those should be published and uh, consider whether or not the publication and consultation on those guidelines would prejudice the independence of the Lord Advocate and the Crown Office? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Um, I think uh, my primary focus, um, as members will appreciate here, is to move this issue forward. And my focus in doing so is about improving access to justice for those individuals who continue uh, to have difficulty in having cases brought before uh, the courts, particularly for crimes uh, which are uh, committed in private. And I uh, believe there is, a, uh, there is common ground across the chamber in order to achieve that. Uh, with regards to um, the specifics that the member uh, raised, uh, particularly in relation to the recommendations that have been made by Lord Bonamy, I believe for the very reason he raised those questions and the points associated with them is why we need to take time to consider them to look at their implications. So, for example, um, uh, if we were to move uh, immediately to the introduction of all uh, police interviews to be recorded in an audiovisual way, there is a significant resource implication for that and also uh, there is a procedural implication for that as well and training implication for uh, the police. So uh, although these are issues that would be worthwhile taking forward out with the whole issue of corroboration, we have to look at them in the round. That's why I believe the best way in which to deal with Lord Bonamy's recommendations along with the rule of corroboration is as a package and to take the time to engage with stakeholders to get their views on these matters and then look at what's the best approach in moving forward with, again, that primary focus about improving access to justice for those who feel that they are being denied justice as a result of the present arrangements we have within our criminal justice system in Scotland. And that's the approach that I intend to take forward with the report and its recommendations. Margaret Mitchell. 
presiding officer, and can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for the advance sight of his statement. I very much welcome his confirmation that the abolition of corroboration will be removed from the bill. This is most certainly the right thing to do, uh, especially given the Bonhomie's review recommendation that the requirement for corroboration should be retained for hearsay evidence and confession evidence. In his statement, the Cabinet Secretary seems open to the implement implementation of the third way, which the Scottish Conservatives have called for since it was omitted from the Carlaway Review and which Lord Bonamy was not allowed to consider in his remit, namely the retaining of corroboration but including it in a wider review of the law of criminal evidence. Given this, will he now look at some of the helpful and effective recommendations of the review group, for example, in relation to the Judicial Institute clarifying and simplifying the language used in jury directions and varying the means of communication of communicating directions to juries uh, and to address the cabinet secretary's specific question i do believe these are recommendations which could be taken forward in this parliamentary session so no, sir, can i see that um one of the reasons why I want to take time to consider these as a package of measures is to ensure that we uh, make sure, sure and to ensure that the balance within our criminal justice system is one which is fair uh, and reasonable. And that's why I want to take the time that's necessary in order to do so. I'm open to the views of other stakeholders around some of the specific recommendations that Lord Bonamy has made that may be uh, could be or could be introduced as part of the criminal justice bill um, at a later stage as well, if there is a consensus on how that should be taken forward. So I'm, uh, I'm open to uh, considering these issues, but we have to look at them as a package on their overall impact in our criminal justice system in Scotland. And the member made reference, in, uh, about the, uh, made reference to the idea or the issue of uh, jury directions. I should be aware we have just started a consultation um, on jury directions uh, for rape cases, uh, which is part of the domestic abuse and the uh, 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 proposals that we have within that consultation. And I do think that the, there is a scope to look at taking some of that work further forward. But what I don't want to do is to get into a situation where we start to have a piecemeal approach to some of the recommendations that Lord Bonamy has set out. We need to look at these as a package and to consider what impact they would have on the overall balance of our criminal justice system in Scotland. And that's the approach I intend to take forward, again, with that very specific focus on improving access to justice for those who experience crimes in private that continue to feel that their cases are not being given the right hearing in court because of the present arrangements we have in place. Thank you. We are due to finish this session at 2.50. I have 10 members who wish to ask a question, so can I urge members to keep the question brief? Christine Graham, followed by Elaine Murray. Now, thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I thank the uh, Cabinet Secretary for his statement? Can I refer him to the Justice Committee's report last year at Stage 1, in which we said at paragraph 27, the majority of committee members are of the view that the case has not been made for abolishing the general requirement for corroboration and recommend the Scottish Government consider removing the provisions from the bill. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that sometimes the committees in this Parliament are told they're not doing their job? In this case, the Justice Committee did its job and thank goodness the Government listened. Cabinet Secretary. Well, uh, saying also, having spent almost seven years on the Justice Committee, I think it does a very good job. Um, and as a, a Justice Secretary who has appeared at on a number of occasions now, I think they uh, are always very diligent in the way in which they scrutinise uh, both the decision-making and the actions of government uh, and its ministers. And I, I, I do recognise the role that the Justice Committee has played in considering this whole issue around the abolition of corroboration and the concerns which have been raised uh, in relation to its proposed abolition. As I also made the point in my statement, I recognise that a consensus has not been reached on this particular matter, that there are views which are polarised on this particular issue, but it takes us right back to the original purpose for which its abolition was proposed, and that was about improving access to justice for those who experience crimes in private. And I've got no doubt that the Justice Committee, in moving this issue forward with the Criminal Justice Bill uh, later uh, this year, will be interested in how we 
take forward the recommendations from Lord Bonamy as a package of measures and how that sits alongside the whole issue of uh, the corroboration uh, rule. And I've got no doubt in due course we'll want to scrutinise any proposals that come forward from government. Aline Murray, followed by Alice McInnes. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Presiding Officer, in my closing speech to the 27th of uh, February last year, I pleaded with the then Cabinet Secretary to remove the corroboration provisions from the Bill for further consideration and was met with what would seem to be a very hostile response. So I am very much welcome uh, the statement that this Cabinet Secretary has made. Now, Lord Bonamy's review group identified significant issues around the issue of dock identification. I'm not sure that the final year of this term of Parliament would be sufficient time, but I wonder whether that is one of the issues which could be examined separately, both the case for ending dock identification and also the means to do so. Cabinet Secretary. Um, I think the Member makes a, 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 a reasonable point around the issue of, for example, dock identification. However, removing it from the court process places a significant burden then on our uh, prosecutors and also the police in the process that they have to put in place prior to a case getting into court as well. So that's why I think on the surface, some of these issues may appear as though they are fairly straightforward initiatives to take forward, but the potential resource implication in other parts of the justice system could be very significant. That's why I think it's important that we don't just jump ahead and decide to select one of these particular recommendations or a couple of them without considering in detail what the full impact of that will actually be further into the system, including for prosecutors and also uh, for our police service as well. Because it is worth keeping in mind uh, that the primary focus of the Bonamy Review Group has been on protections for the accused. And we need to make sure that any of the measures which we take forward are ones which don't make an imbalance within our system. Uh, that could actually be difficult to justify. So that's why I don't want to, at this stage, give a commitment to any of these specific recommendations until we have worked through the full practical implications of them. But I'm more than happy to make sure that as we take that work forward with stakeholders, that we will inform Parliament as to what we believe is the best approach. Alice McInnes, followed by Roderick Campbell. Thank you. Um, I argued for and secured the suspension of this bill until the outcome of the Bonnevay review and Lord Bonnevay's report today I think vindicates that approach because it exposes the scale of the task the Parliament would have faced had Kenny McCaskill had his way and if this bill was already law but we shouldn't forget he was backed by the entire cabinet and I do wonder if the cabinet secretary regrets his government's obstinacy on this. On a more positive note, um, I share the Cabinet Secretary's wish to secure a better conviction rate for those crimes committed in private. Research into jury decision-making could be crucial to finding a way forward. Can the Cabinet Secretary explain his thinking in this regard in terms of taking that forward as a matter of, of importance? Cabinet Secretary. Well, the first thing I should say is that uh, what I'm very proud of in this government is its determination to try to improve access to justice for those who are denied access to justice. And uh, we will certainly make no apology for that. And we will continue to take forward an approach which we believe will deliver that particular objective. Can I say in relation to the specific point around uh, jury uh, research, I'm conscious that this is an issue which has also been raised by uh, a variety of stakeholders in the past uh, in looking at the potential benefits that could come from uh, jury research. There were concerns about its potential impact on uh, the, uh, the what you call it, contempt of court uh, provisions. However, as Lord Bonamy set out, there is a mechanism and way in which you can do that, uh, which would uh, overcome that particular obstacle. That's why I'm open-minded uh, to the issue of the research. But I'm open-minded to it, not just on the basis that it will allow us to look at the uh, the issue of uh, uh, jury size, uh, majorities, and also uh, the three verdicts. I think there may be some other wider issues that that research could consider. Um, and I want to look at it on that basis, not just on the specifics that Lord Bonamy has recommended it for, on whether there could be value in looking at some other wider issues within our justice system. And that's, again, something I want to consider as uh, we move forward as to what that could potentially look like. But that's why I'm open-minded to it, and open-minded to it in such a way as it would go wider than what Lord Bonamy has recommended. Roderick Campbell, followed by Jim Baxter. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Cabinet Secretary, you will appreciate there remains widespread uh, public concern about the historically low prosecution and conviction rates for victims of sexual offences and domestic abuse. Is there anything further that you can offer in the interim uh, to address those concerns? 
Cabinet Secretary. Enough, sir, as I uh, set out my statement, there has been significant progress made in terms of uh, domestic abuse and sexual offences uh, cases reaching our courts, with the significant increase we have seen since 2013-14, uh, and we want to continue to see that work being taken forward. One of the benefits we have had uh, from uh, Police Scotland is a specialist investigations unit, which has been able to give much more focus and dedication to these types of uh, crimes, which has allowed a much greater level of expertise to be deployed in tackling uh, both domestic uh, abuse and also sexual offences uh, cases. The other aspect uh, is around the uh, additional £20 million, which the First Minister um, announced uh, several weeks ago, which is about looking at how we can improve the way in which our criminal justice system is operating by cases getting through uh, the system uh, quicker, by the type of support that we provide to victims uh, in the course of a, a particular case uh, going through uh, the courts, but also looking at how we can speed up the intervention methods that can help to reduce these types of offences from occurring in the first place. So that's from the Caledonian uh, scheme right through to some of the violence reduction programmes which we run in our schools. All of those measures, I believe, will continue to allow us to improve uh, the way in which people experience our justice system and to reduce uh, the levels of uh, domestic and sexual violence that take place within our society. But alongside that, um, I intend to work with stakeholders on the recommendations from Lord Bonamy to look at which of these measures could assist us and help them to improve uh, further access to our justice system in Scotland. Jane Baxter, followed by Gil Patterson. Thank you. A note from the Cabinet Secretary's statement that the Police Scotland pilots of domestic abuse disclosure, known as Clare's Law, are due to be complete in May. Could the Cabinet Secretary give some indication of whether resources are to be made available to roll out this good practice, and will we see progress on this in the life of this Parliament? Cabinet Secretary. Well, we have already saw progress uh, in this area in the course of this Parliament with the pilots which, we have, which Police Scotland have taken forward, and the additional £20 million that we have announced as well will allow us to look at some of these other programmes that can be taken forward. Uh, the feedback I have had around the, um, uh, the domestic abuse uh, notification uh, scheme that the pilots are operating is a, a very positive uh, one where uh, people value it uh, and Police Scotland uh, believe that it is valuable. Uh, so I am very sympathetic to that and again that is some of the work that we will be looking to take forward and to see what we can learn from these pilots uh, to consider how that could be applied on a national basis. Gil Patterson, followed by Mick McMahon. Thanks very much, Chair, <laughs> Presiding Officer. Given that the motivation to remove requirements for corroboration was to improve access to justice for victims of crime, uh, an aim that I very, very much uh, supported and, uh, at the time and still support, what steps is the Scottish Government now taking to help victims? Cabinet Secretary. Well, President Officer, one of the areas of work we're taking forward is the, uh, uh, is the provisions within the uh, uh, Victims and Witnesses Act in order to improve the way in which uh, victims' rights are uh, promoted and supported within our criminal justice system. Alongside that, since we announced an additional £20 million uh, for uh, domestic violence uh, uh, organisations, uh, we've been engaged with the Scottish Court and Tribunal Service, our Crown Office, uh, Scottish Women's Aid, Rape Crisis Scotland and Assist all looking at how we can take forward uh, more proactive measures in order to support uh, individuals who experience domestic violence and how we can improve the system uh, with the use of these resources. Alongside that, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, one of the other aspects that I am keen to see uh, being developed is the, uh, is the preventative uh, measures, such as the Caledonian model. Uh, which, um, uh, which has already been rolled out in some parts of the country, uh, which can help to reduce uh, the risk of uh, perpetrators of domestic violence from committing similar offences again in the future. And this additional resource will allow us to look at how we can uh, uh, scope uh, further work in this area and for that to then be rolled out into other parts of the country, and in doing so, helping to support victims much more effectively. Michael McMahon, followed by Christian Aller. Thank you, President Officer. The, the Cabinet Secretary will be aware that on two occasions now I have consulted on the reform of the three verdicts and on the jury's uh, majorities, notwithstanding the, the report of uh, Lord Bonamy's uh, group. Does the, the Cabinet Secretary recognise that the consultations that I have undertaken show that there is widespread support from the legal, academic uh, professions and also the public for progress on the three verdict system? Um, given that I have achieved the necessary uh, support uh, from colleagues across the Parliament to take that bill proposal forward, will the Cabinet Secretary meet me?
to discuss how we can uh, progress this issue, because this is a, 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 an issue that has been hanging around for far too long and now needs to genuinely be addressed. Cabinet Secretary. Well, officer, I do recognise the work that Mr McMahon has taken forward in this particular area over uh, several years now, and I would, of course, be more than happy to meet with them to uh, discuss it. I am mindful, though, of the recommendation from Lord Bonamy on this matter, in that he, the review group do not feel that they can come to a recommendation on the three verdicts uh, 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 that we have at the present time until that jury research has been undertaken. That is why I am open-minded to undertaking uh, that particular uh, type of uh, research. And of course, that is an issue for the member to consider on how he wishes to pursue um, his own uh, member's bill. But I would be more than happy to meet with the member to discuss that further. I have three further members who wish to ask a question. I intend to take them all, given the importance of this. Uh, but can I ask that the questions are brief? Christian Allard, followed by John Finney. Thank you, President Officer. As a, a member of the Justice Committee, uh, I would like to say that uh, I do regret that we didn't manage to build a consensus around the collaboration rules. But uh, with, in light of the, of the question today and the reaction of different members, uh, I will ask the Cabinet Secretary why he couldn't provide clarity as to why all Lord Bonhomme's recommendations cannot be taken forward in this parliamentary session. Well, officer, uh, can I say there is, um, uh, as I've mentioned in a couple of my responses so far, there are a number of uh, significant uh, complexities to these particular recommendations. If I can, for example, uh, just make reference to the issue around the jury research, around uh, verdicts, majorities, uh, and uh, the way in which we, uh, uh, we operate our jury system. It, it's been indicated that could take some time to undertake that work um, over a period of time. Uh, over, it could take more than a year. Uh, possibly uh, two years uh, to complete that type of detailed work that will be necessary in order to form the right type of decisions on this matter. And it's just simply not possible to fit that in in this parliamentary uh, term. Again, the issue around dock identification, although it appears straightforward, there are potential other consequences which come from this, which have to be considered in uh, great detail. And again, for example, the audio-visual recording that I mentioned in response to uh, Hugh Henry's uh, question, again, the potential resource implication for that and the practical implication for the police uh, are considerable as well. And in order to consider these issues fully uh, within this parliamentary term, there is insufficient time to allow us to progress the Criminal Justice Bill as it stands at the present moment and also look at all of these issues and to consider them in sufficient detail before we can arrive at a final decision uh, within this parliamentary session. John Finney, then finally, Christina McKelvey. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Thank you, uh, Minister, for the statement. You, you rightly refer to the report as a protection for the accused, and there is a reiteration in the report of a concern already picked up in a report delivered to you a number of months ago by HMIC about the, the concerns about suspects not uh, waiving their rights to legal assistance at uh, police stations um, and the implication that uh, the costs of that are a factor in it. So will you lay before Parliament regulations disapplying the provisions of the Legal Aid Scotland Act 1986, which causes a suspect to pay for the cost of legal assistance provided to them at a police office? That is something you could do to enhance concessions straight away. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, officer, um, I'm conscious this is an issue that has been flagged up by Lord Bonamy in his review. And as the member will be aware, there are some provisions already within the Criminal Justice Bill for those who are vulnerable adults in terms of uh, waiving the rights to uh, legal representation. Uh, but I, of course, will consider all of these recommendations, including the one which the member has highlighted, and consider what is the best approach to go forward, uh, and, uh, and will consider the views of those like uh, the member and also the Justice Committee uh, and other stakeholders before we come to a final decision on which of the recommendations will take forward within the Criminal Justice Bill. And Christina McKelvey. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer. Um, the Cabinet Secretary has mentioned a lot in his contribution today about those crimes committed in private, and he will know many of the organisations involved in the cross-party groups Men Violence Against Women Rape Crisis, Women Aid and Zero Tolerance were very supportive of the measure of uh, withdrawing the, the need for corroboration. If the corroboration form is not to go ahead at this time, what steps can the Cabinet Secretary tell us he will take to address these concerns, and would he consider meeting with the cross-party group, for instance, to help address those concerns? Cabinet Secretary. Well, President Officer, I should say that um, as part of our response to the Bonamy review today, we have been engaging with stakeholders um, who have a particular interest in this matter. Uh, and a range of these stakeholders have expressed their views in the past around the whole issue 
of the abolition of the corroboration uh, rule on relation. So, and we will continue to do so. And I, of course, would be more than happy to engage with the cross-party group at some point on this particular issue. As I also mentioned, we have uh, also got a specific consultation on a domestic abuse offence. Uh, and also about uh, using the resources, additional £20 million, and how we can improve support to those who are victims of uh, crimes uh, of domestic abuse uh, within, our, uh, within our court system. And also the provisions within the Victims and Witnesses Act are there to help to support the needs of all victims, including those of domestic violence and of uh, uh, sexual uh, uh, violence and rape. So all of these measures that we have been taking forward that are leading to improvements within our criminal justice system, we will continue to move forward. Alongside that, looking at what aspects of this particular package we can take forward uh, and to help to improve the uh, way in which individuals access our justice system. So the member can be absolutely assured that this government's commitment to improving access to justice for those who continue to experience crimes in pilot, private, they experience difficulty in getting justice through our court system, will continue to be a central focus on how we want to improve our justice system within Scotland. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. That concludes the statement. And we turn to the next item of business, which is a debate on...